Hi, my name is Jared Living. I'm with Group 3, and today I'm going to be the lead for the air conditioner experiment that we're going to be doing next week. And as fate would have it, I'm also going to be the reporter, so I'm going to be very well acquainted with this experiment. And I'm just going to start you off with a basic introduction of the schematic of the experimental apparatus. As you can see here, these um, points right here are going to be temperature and pressure and me measuring devices. And the working fluid is going to flow up here through the condenser. And then here through the capillary tube, down through the evaporator, and then repeating it. Now, the basic components of the experimental apparatus, or basically our working fluid, is going to be a refrigerant that is Freon 22, and which is going to be contained in a Freon tank back there and it's going to be, we're going to try this experiment using different mass and different pounds of the working fluid. Then you're going to have a compressor whose job is simply to compress the working fluid in its vapor state. The condenser, which is going to condense the fluid down to a liquid state. The evaporator, which is going to evaporate the liquid into um, a vapor state. And the capillary tube, which is supposed to act as a throttling device for the working fluid. And the throttle on the right is basically something that's able to manipulate the, qual the quality of the fluid as it um, goes through the cycle. And here's a basic ideal, um, basic schematic of a refrigeration cycle, which is what the air conditioner is going to be following, as you can see here. The heat is going to be taken from a cold environment to the evaporator. It's going to flow either through the expansion valve or capillary tube. I want to spawn. Oh, wait, it's only a little bit. I'm sorry. Then it's going to be pumped through the evaporator, compress, then go through the condenser, where heat is going to be rejected to a warm environment through an expansion valve or capillary tube and repeat. And the ideal TS diagram for the refrigeration cycle, cycle you'll see that from state one as it goes from the evaporator. It's going to come out into the superheated region. Then down here, it's going to come back to the saturated vapor liquid mixture region as it goes through the condenser. Then come through the throttle, the throttling device, and then repeating again. And right here, you can see the relationship between the pressure and the enthalpy. You can see here that um, the most notable feature is right here, where the enthalpy is at the highest as it goes through the compressor. And the basic objectives of this experiment is basically to analyze the performance of the air conditioner. And we're basically going to be trying to calculate the coefficient of the performance of the air conditioner, the TS, and make use of the TS and pH diagrams, and basically try to understand how the charge level or amount of fuel that's in the cycle affects the performance of our air conditioner. And basically, the thermodynamic analysis is going to make use of the wet and dry bulk temperature of the air in order to be able to calculate enthalpy, the average velocity, of, excuse me, velocity in order to calculate the mass flow rate and both initial and exit pressure and temperature exiting um, around the control volume of the evaporator. And our basic assumption is going to be constant pressure condenser and evaporator as well as an isotropic compressor. And the fundamental concepts and equations of this experiment are basically going to be using, making use of the work of the compressor, which is the enthalpy exiting the compressor minus the enthalpy entering the compressor. And as I said before, that's, that's just say isotropic, that the, iso the entropy of the working fluid both entering and exiting the pressure should be the same. And then we're also going to make use of the heat um, right here, uh, sorry, the, the term is, is, is escaping right now, but basically it's going to be the enthalpy exiting the evaporator minus the enthalpy entering the evapor evaporator. And then the ratio of these two values is going to be the coefficient of performance of our air conditioner. And the anticipated results that I have right here, I calculated 168 kilojoules per kilogram of an evaporator. And I calculated the work of the compressor to be 25 kilojoules per kilogram of the compressor. 
and I got an overall coefficient of performance of 6.72. And as um, Marcus was saying earlier on, based on research that I did in thermal dynamics textbook, um, most of the coefficients of performance is typically range between two to four. I think the reason why mine is higher is because of you know the assumptions I made: an isobaric evaporator and condenser and an isentropic um, compressor. We know that in real life that's not going to be the case. And basically to conclude, um, sources of anticipated sources of error for this experiment are going to be obviously improper um, calibration techniques in order to calibrate the pressure and which can then throw off our, our measurements. And I'm also, based on the experiments that were done in the past, I'm anticipating that with increase in charge level that you're going to get a better performance out of your air conditioning. And that's the conclusion of my talk. Any questions? Well, we saw and we have cut from uh, the long calibration of the instrument. I think um, that the efficiency, the home, how do I phrase this, the capacity of your fluid tank that the Freon's going to be stored in, I think that's going to be we really want to make sure that we get the best quality going into the a, a fluid going through the cycle. And I think one of the sources of error could be, you know, the quality as it goes through the compressor and through the cycle may not be as as good. Any other questions? Why do we have like I made basic assumptions about each device. In the ideal situation, you're basically going to assume that there's not going to be any pressure change between your compressor and your, I mean, not your compressor, your evaporator as well as your condenser. And now you're also going to assume that your compressor is going to compress the fluid isentropically. And I, as, like I said, when we're really performing the experiment, and we're trying to measure the values of the temperature and the pressure, that's obviously not going to be the case. You're going to expect um, to be pressure differences between your evaporator and your condenser and to have like not an isotropic compressor. And I think that, that was really a significant source. That's going to be a, a significant difference between the coefficient of the performance for your ideal situation and the real situation. Any other questions?